Okay, we've already had a look, a brief look at how to trigger this system. Now we're going to take a look at um, actually testing of the component. Now we touched on this in one of the other videos, so we're still back to this initial, the initial barrel type coil here, which is used with all the distributor type systems. Now the system we were using, it was the Kettering ignition system, but it's still the same um, as what we actually had running through all the distributors, which is this coil here, which was on the engine frame we looked at yesterday. So, without using a scope, we can test this coil with a meter. Now when we're testing any component like that, remember it's going to be resistance test testing we're doing on it. So as with any component, you'd have to disconnect the component from the, the coil lead going to the distributor cap or plug, and disconnect off the leads off it, and leave us with just the coil itself. So when we go testing it, and these are disconnected, what we're going to say is, I'll just draw up here what we're going to do before we actually do it. So, here's our meter here. So the display up here and our dial here, pointing to ohms. Now, remember, if your meter is an auto ranging meter, it will sort itself out for whatever particular um, level of ohms resistance is in the component. If it is a manually adjusted meter, we will run from anything up to 200 ohms. So that will measure anything at all up to 200 ohms. The next step here will be 2,000 ohms. Then we have 20,000 ohms. And it just keeps getting bigger and bigger until we get up to the final one here, up here, which will be mega ohms. So, if you're going to test a coil like this, you'll have to have some idea of what type of resistance is in it. Now, the best way to do this, because nobody's going to expect you to remember all of this stuff, um, exact figures, will be to pull up the auto data system on it, which is what we've done over here. So, We've got in, we've picked our engine, it's a Ford Fiesta, one litre, it's an old engine, 1982, and we've gone into the technical data on it, um, and what we really want to have a look at here is the ignition system. So, if we follow down, it tells us ignition coil type, uh, coil supply voltage, 7 volts plus, so remember we had a ballast resistor fitted on this system, 12 volts, volts before the ballast, and then about 7 volts after the ballast supplying the coil, tells me the ballast resistance to check it and it also this is what we're after here the primary resistance if we come across here it's going to tell us that the primary resistance is anywhere between 0.95 of an ohm up to 1.6 of an ohm so we can see the secondary resistance then comes across here and it tells us anywhere from 5,000 ohms up to 9,300 now remember on your meters it will display larger uh, thousands of ohms of voltage as kilo ohms. So 5,000 ohms will be displayed on your meter uh, at the correct setting uh, for the ohms as 5 point something, right? 5.00 kilo ohms. If it was all the way up at the top of its range, it would be 9.300 uh, kilo ohms that you'd see. So if we're going to connect to this, Remember, there's no polarity in um, resistance at all. So, if we are going to connect the leads to this, it doesn't matter what way we go with our leads from it, uh, we're connecting in series. So we'll bring one lead down to here, and the black lead down to this side here. It will, at this stage, because most meters, when they're disconnected, will show either one and a space, and a dot like that, or it'll tell you OL, right, on the meter. So that's letting us know at that stage that the, the, the leads aren't connected to anything. Now, inside our leads itself, there will be an internal uh, resistance in the leads. So what we need to do is, if we want to measure the resistance of this primary winding exactly, we need to take out that internal resistance of the leads before we do it. When we're talking about that, what we're actually talking about doing here, this meter here, you see disconnected, it displays OL. When I connect them, it'll start to read. Now it's flicking through its ranges there, and this particular meter, when I connect them together, 
is giving me an internal resistance of 0.1 or point, let's say 0.2 of an ohm, right? So we'd have to subtract that from whatever the reading we get uh, for the, for the uh, primary one. So we're connected up now. We've zeroed out and we're going to read a resistance. And remember, from our specs, it said the primary winding resistance was anywhere from 0 0.95 of an ohm up to 1.6 of an ohm. So once we fall inside that range, we're good. Our primary winding, primary winding is good. Okay, so we're gonna test the primary winding on this coil now. Remember, if we zero out our meter first to find out what the internal resistance of the leads is, we find we have an internal resistance of approximately 0 0.1, 0 0.2 of an ohm. So remember, Connecting um, a meter to measure resistance, we disconnect the component completely and we connect the meter in series with the, with the component. Now polarity doesn't really matter on it, um, so we'll just go ahead, touch off either side of the primary winding and we'll find out what this is. So we're reading 1.6 ohms and we have to take our 0.2 off that which brings us back to 1.4 ohms, which puts us inside our range here, so the primary winding is in good condition. The next one we're going to test, again we can do it with the meter, because there is a physical connection there from the auto transformer point, we can pick either side of this coil to go from. We could say pick, take there and go directly into here, so for secondary resistance, let's go that way. From the plus, directly down into the tower and make sure I make a good connection in here. Now remember, we already saw where thousands of ohms of a resistance is going to be in there. So if you're going to have a manual meter, you will have to move your dial from 200 up to about 20K, 20,000 ohms here to get a resistance on it. Uh, if I go to 2,000, the scale in the meter will not allow me to read anything above 2,000. So what happens with some meters is it will flash at you. It will be showing you a flashing of, of, a, of some reading on it, but it won't read it properly. Don't forget, you have to click your meter up to the next one here. And we know it's up anywhere, I think it said from 5,000 uh, up to about 9,500 ohms, somewhere in around there. Um, so we need to be up on that 20,000 uh, kilo ohm scale. For the auto range of meter, it doesn't matter, it will sort it out itself. So, let's go and do our tests on it. Now, Again, before we go do testing, this is an exact copy of this coil. And what we have in the middle here is our windings. The larger winding out here in, in gauge is our primary winding. Because remember, our primary winding is seen as a low voltage, either 12 or 14 volts, but higher current winding. So it has to be capable of carrying a degree of current in it, whether it's five, six, seven, eight ohms, whatever it is. The secondary winding is seen as a high voltage, low current winding. So if it's low current, it doesn't have to be very thick at all. I don't know whether you can see that, can you? Let me see if I can, maybe it's worse. It'll be worse, maybe, no. Yeah, it's flickering in and out. Yeah. So it's a tiny, tiny winding here on it because the amount of current that's actually going to flow through that is going to be so small. Now the voltage pushing that is going to be huge. So the secondary winding is seen as a high voltage, low current winding. In the center, we have our laminated iron core here. So there are strips of iron. Um, and remember, its function is when the current is flowing through this, there will be a, uh, a magnetic field built up around the primary winding. The function of the laminated iron core is to swell it up, to magnify it up to its fullest strength. When I collapse that current, so open the contact breaker points, first of all we get a self-induced voltage back into it, so that voltage spike we saw on the light bulb video. It makes the magnetic field suddenly pulse out stronger. But at the same time, it's collapsing. And where it's collapsing back to is where it got magnified from, which is the soft iron core in the center of both the windings. 
So in the process of collapsing back in towards this, it cuts through the secondary winding. Now, that is called mutual induction into the secondary winding of it there, because it's already induced into itself, self-induction, and now it's mutually inducing, in other words, going into something else as well as the primary winding. If we take a look here at it, we said our motor coil uh, is a step-up transformer. So how are they stepping it up? They have more turns of wire in the secondary than is the primary. If I had 50 turns of wire, say, in the primary, and I didn't want to step it up, I just wanted it to be the same, I'd make the ratio to the secondary. If I didn't want to step up the voltage, it would be exactly the same. So a one-to-one -one ratio, which meant that if that, I open and close that circuit and it, it self-induced, say, 200 volts into the circuit, what I'd end up coming out of the primary is exactly the same, 200 volts. Um, if I wanted to reduce it, I'd make my ratio 50 windings in the primary to 25 in the secondary, which would have my output voltage. So 200 voltage in the primary, and I'd step it down then, and it would end up being 100 volts. So that would be a step down transformer. Um, I can see sometimes use on uh, building sites and stuff like that. Now, for us, we wanted to step it up. So what we say is we're going 100 times more. So we have a one to 100 ratio. So if I self-induce into the primary 200 volts, it's going to step it up and make it 100 times more than 200. So we have 200, there's 10 times more, there's 100 times more, giving me 20,000. If I were going again higher, 300 and 100 times more, we'd end up being 30,000 volts. Okay, so we know now that this is going to be a higher resistance in this, right? Because it's a hundred times more. And if we, if we unraveled it, unraveled all the turns in the winding and actually spread it out in a long straight line, it would be a hundred times the distance than the primary. So if we're going to test it, we'll then go the same, right? Now we can see from our diagram, it doesn't matter. We've gone from the positive side right down to the uh, coil tower here to get onto the end of this. So we're getting the resistance here of the primary and the secondary. But remember, it doesn't really make any difference to our final result because we said, I think the scale was for our secondary anywhere from, say, 5,000 ohms, 5 kilo ohms up to 9.5 or 9.5 kilo ohms. So our small primary somewhere in here is not going to make a difference really to me being inside or outside this reading here, right? So it doesn't matter, we can take it from either side, but we're going to go from the positive side and straight down the cloud tower. So again, we find the positive side here, and remember, zero out the meter, and do it every time for it, uh, just to make sure. We have about 0.2 of an Intel resistance in the leads. We're going from our positive side here, straight down the coil tower, and we're going to read the resistance of the secondary here. So our resistance in the secondary is 6.46 kilo ohms, which is 6,460 kilo ohms here. And we can see the small little reading just under my finger here is gives me our kilo ohms um, reading on it. Now, back to our, stat, our uh, data. So secondary resistance, and if it falls anywhere inside 5,000 to 9,300, and we have 6,400, I think it was. Um, we're well inside that, so indicating that the primary winding is in good condition for us. The last test on this coil then. Remember, if we look at the internals of it here, you can see it's mounted on plastic here to keep it away from the base. Um, again, inside here, we have an insulating paper Right, to keep it away from touching the casing on the coil. So when it's dropped in there, no part of the winding should be touching the outside casing of it. So how do we test for that? Remember again, go from anywhere to 
normally the base you'll find a clear spot and it should be open set we should not get any connection between them we'll try the secondary just to make sure and again open set though so that coil is in good condition remember it's going to be generating a huge amount of voltage so it's going to build up a good degree of heat in there to try and stem the heat from overheating uh, the coil from overheating we fill the coil with a transformer oil uh, which sits inside there and that's going to take the heat away from the, the, the absorb of the heat from the coil and stop it from overheating and boarding it. So that's our basic coil testing done. We've tested our primary, we've tested our secondary and we've tested that we are not sharp circuited to air anywhere. Earth being where the body is going to be clamped onto the frame as it was on the engine. Um, so that's it for that. We'll continue on with some further testing um, in future videos. Thank you.